Hey, welcome to PNW Enduro. Today I'm out on the Circle 300 SE, the two-stroke. I haven't actually ridden this bike in just over a month. Last ride I was out on the 2024 KTM 300 XCW TBI, and before that I did four rides in a row on the four-stroke. So it's been a while since I've been out on this two-stroke. I'm thinking a little bit about 2024 models that are coming out. Some guys are riding them already and fuel injected versus carbureted. So Sherco, as you probably know, sticking with the carb for 2024. They pushed back their TBI model another year it looks like. After riding the KTM last week, I think that Sherco's are falling behind a little bit actually. Um, this bike is great, fantastic bike. But the new TBI bikes run so good that I am ready to embrace fuel injected two strokes fully. I know we can get caught up and always one to have the latest, greatest technology. Sometimes we forget how good we have it. This is a fantastic hard enduro machine. I am excited to see some water on this trail. That's great. After several years of KTM TPI bikes, a lot of people were switching back to carburetors. The lack of bottom end power on the TPIs and the sensor issues, which were really bad around my area. I'm sure that the sensor issues is worse for us in the Pacific Northwest because we ride in such wet conditions a lot of the year. The more contamination gets in and ruins those sensors. I haven't heard of sensor issues on the TBIs yet. So I think KTM solved that. But regardless, I think a lot of people switched back to car bikes in the past few years. And now that TBI is out and it's so good, people are starting to switch back. I am kind of waiting to see what Sherco does in 2025. They are due for switching to TBI as well as a new frame, new plastic better mounting for the air filter your access so we'll see if if Sherco doesn't come through with those updates I might be switching back to KTM next year 
That new XCW is just so good. Again, nothing wrong with this Sherco. But I am getting up there in hours. And I like to have a little bit more of a fresh bike for some of the remote riding I do. Something interesting that kind of ties in with the carburetor versus fuel injected is here in Canada this summer, the government has mandated that all fuels must contain ethanol. So before that, most of us would buy Shell Premium, which is a 92 or 93 octane. And uh, I think more so it's the Chevron 94. I always got the Chevron because it was ethanol free and it was on its dedicated own pump. It wasn't mixed with the other fuels. So as of this summer, all fuel grades in Canada have ethanol. And you know, we all want ethanol free in our bikes. I think it's more of an issue on the carbureted bikes. Possibly the ethanol gumming things up in there. I guess it's a concern on fuel injectors too, but it's gonna be more important to make sure you have fresh fuel in your bike. I know a lot of people are worried about that and then others say, oh, I just run ethanol on my bikes anyways, it's fine. So, it's kind of interesting. This area, I only come to you about once a year. It's not quite what it used to be. Lost a lot of trails to logging and whatnot. But it's kind of where I got my start in uh, single track riding. So it's kind of nostalgic for me. And it's got a few really good trails left, like this one.
So for those of you still riding a uh, carbureted two-stroke like me, let me know in the comments, are you ready to switch to a fuel-injected bike or do you want to stick with your carburetor for as long as possible? Also, for those of you on a TPI bike, do you want to upgrade to a TBI or are you still happy with your current ride? Let me know in the comments. This summer I had my fuel injected four stroke above 12,000 feet and I didn't notice any difference in power. I've ridden this bike with a smart carb this summer over 9,000, last summer over 12. And once you get above eight or nine, you do start noticing a power loss having to ride a gear lower sometimes. Although the smart carb does somewhat compensate for elevation, it's not fully like fuel injected. I think four strokes are less susceptible to those changes as well. But you do lose from what I've read. I think it was 3% power for every 1,000 feet. But since I ride a lot of big mountain stuff in the summers, another reason I'm ready for fuel injection. <laughs> 